Hello, my name is Susan Steele Mulholland. Welcome to Artbeat. Today, we're going to be visiting a very famous Bucks County artist, Ranoff Bai. And I'm standing here because we're going to go on location with Mr. Bai to one of his favorite places to paint. And this goat in the background is soon going to be one of his subjects. Come with us to meet Ranoff. Mr. Bai, it's so nice to be here in your studio. Thank you for having us today. Well, it's very nice to have you visit me and to show you my work. I thought perhaps we'd discuss a little bit about how I got started in painting okay. in the first place. I, we have here on the floor a painting of the old homestead where I grew up when I was a boy. This is, uh, we call it Old Congress in Holly Kong, which is around down from Route 202. Now this is just a section of the old house, which I did on an autumn day with the long shadows mm -hmm. coming in from the afternoon light. And uh, this farm, we call it the farm, it's now uh, run by my brothers uh, for the estate of the Bai family. And uh, this house is now occupied by a tenant, but do we, the Bai family still runs it. How old is this house? This house was built in different periods, but the oldest section, which is out of the picture, was about 1699. Oh, it's beautiful. Now, do you usually paint with watercolor? My work is mostly watercolor, Susan. I, I do some oils, but uh, people know me as a watercolorist. Mm -hmm. And you've won many awards in A few here over the years. Would you show us um, how you progress from the sketching <clears throat> stage to a, a watercolor? Well, a couple of weeks ago, my wife and I went out to Lancaster County. This was a 4th of July weekend. And uh, we just got under the car and looked around for something to paint and we came upon this old bridge, which is now blocked off, uh, not far from Ephrata, Pennsylvania. And I like the way this, this is a humpback bridge made out of stone and the little cluster of farm buildings. Mm -hmm. And I immediately got out my painting material and made a rough sketch. This was done in about half an hour, but I wasn't very happy with the composition. So I returned the following day with a new sheet of paper and I, uh, Gave a little no, bit this more. This is much more detail. Yeah, gave it? more attention to the buildings and the bridge, but I still wasn't happy enough. I wanted to get more foreground, and mm -hmm. I didn't have with me the proper paper at the time. So yesterday, I uh, stretched a new sheet of paper, which is about two inches deeper than these, mm -hmm. okay. and uh, I'm going to get more of the water under the bridge here and reflections. Now this is an unusual technique. Now, yeah. Now this area you have here is what I call a, a patina made up of a mixture of oil and turpentine. It's a little bit tricky to explain, mm -hmm. but it's basically a, a method of uh, oil and turpentine oil paint applied to iris and what you get is a reaction. Like a greening. Uh, and, it, and you get a granulation which is very attractive mm -hmm. to simulate stonework mm -hmm. or or gravel. Or so you'll paint over this. And I'll paint over that, mm -hmm. yes. Now this picture I'll get to uh, tomorrow, mm -hmm. and I hope it'll be a finished painting. Now do you paint every day? Oh yes, I have a regular schedule. I try to get down here either on location or in my own studio by 8 o'clock in the morning. Now <clears throat> I want to show you, a sk my wife and I went to Ireland last uh, summer. It was part of a workshop I gave in England and Ireland. But uh, after the workshop was over, uh, my w wife and I went up to Northern Ireland for a whole month and rented mm -hmm. a couple of little cottages, mm -hmm. not, not very different from these buildings. Mm -hmm. And this was, uh, the scene was uh, done on Ackle Island in County Mayo in the northwest coast of Ireland. And a very exciting subject matter, just stupendous scenery. And when I got home, I wanted to do it over again more dramatically, and, and this is the oh, result. My. And uh, and I've been to Ireland so many times that I have it has grown on me uh, very much as a wonderful country for atmospheric mm -hmm. and scenic effects. The skies are constantly changing. Uh, the weather is invigorating, although it can be kind of cool even in summer. 
And there's uh, Now, did you do this one entirely from the sketch, or did you use a photograph too? Well, I, uh, on, on a painting trip, I take quite a few slides. I don't, I'm very careful about taking pictures, though, because uh, before you know it, you have hundreds of pictures which you don't really need. So I only take pictures which I think can help me in a future painting. So I took a number of shots of this view, and along with this sketch, I managed to uh, paint a finished mm -hmm. painting from it. Do you have any um, watercolors to show us of this area, this surrounding area where we are right now? Well, I, of course, most of my work is done right here in Pennsylvania and over in New Jersey. Here's a, a farm which I've been painting uh, over a number of years in West Amwell Township, which is just over the bridge from Lamp. Now, this is a farm which is run by an old woman who still has a ter terrific vitality. I call her Anna. And uh, she has about 25 cows and a lot of chickens. And she runs this place herself. Now, this barn, you can see from Route 202, uh, uh, which, which really cut right through the farm when they built that new uh, cutoff. Mm -hmm. As you can it's see, the old uh, siding is falling down. Mm -hmm. And uh, the chickens are all over the place. And uh, here's a feeding station, which is rather an unusual element in, uh, in farms. You don't see these things very often. But I love to, when I get so close to a, a scene as this, I like to get the texture. I like this to feel like wood, and that to feel like stone. Sense. This likes to feel like earth. And uh, that's why I employ special technical uh, Now, did matters. you use what you just spoke about before? I don't. There. I think I uh, I may have used it in parts, but I'm not. I mm -hmm. don't always. Uh, I because don't, you still have texture here. Yeah, I don't say that it. I used it so much mm -hmm. in this picture. Mm -hmm. Well, here's another one. Where is this one? Yeah, this is the uh, for Botnik farm, near where I live, and it's uh, as you can see, it's just a a, f a close up of uh, the overhang with some ducks. Uh, this was painted in the late autumn or say November and the trees are bare and you have very stark shadows running across the barn. Uh, here's a big ash tree. Is this tree still there? That tree has been cut down unfortunately. It got oh. old and uh, sickly. They had to cut it down because it became unsafe. Now the light here, what time of day? Is this? this is a, I presume this was painted uh, uh, in the late morning considering the light because after noontime, the sun goes around, and this would be in shadow. Since this farm is so near, could we go over there on location so we can see how you do this? I'd be glad to take you there. It's only a quarter of a mile from here. Ranoff, I can see why you come here to paint frequently. Where are we in connection with your studio? Well, Susan, we're here on the Forbotnik farm on Street Road, about half a mile down from Mechanicsville Road. And the farm is now operated by a third generation family of Stephen Forbotnik, who was uh, the grandfather of the present uh, operator. And I have been painting here off and on for about 35 years, this farm. And I have, it hasn't changed all that much, except uh, things have been uh, repaired somewhat. Mm -hmm. The buildings have been restored. Uh, the dairy farm is gone. By and large, the, uh, the barn and buildings are yes. pretty much the same as they have been for 30, 30 years. The colors are so rich, aren't they? Well, uh, of course, this is summertime, and I don't paint out the field so much in the summer. I prefer winter, autumn, and spring when there's more bones to the landscape. Mm -hmm. I don't, the foliage usually is an obstruction to landscape painting. But right here, we're in a barnyard. Yes where the trees do not interfere with what I want to do. I'm interested in this setup here with this little shed where the mm -hmm. sheep and the goats are be coming in and out during the painting session. And uh, I want to do a painting of this this fall. I have pictures I've taken of it, and I want to get a working sketch to go by. Now, you've already done one of, of chickens here before? I did one last piece mm -hmm. under the barnyard. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a strong autumn light coming in from the side in the afternoon. 
Today we don't have that situation. Yeah. It's very overcast, quite dark. But we're just here to show you the farm and to talk about uh, the uh, the wonderful possibilities that yes. uh, artists finds here. Would you explain to us how you set up for um, doing your paintings? Yeah, I have here. Uh, first of all, I have with me a tripod easel, which has. Uh, three feet which extend up or down the way you want it. It has a cross arm here which is adjustable for angle and with a turnbuckle screw so that this becomes quite tight. This, this easel is made expressly for watercolor painting. It's not for oil or anything else. Then this board I have here is made of a piece of uh, half inch homosote and I have a piece of 300 pound arches paper pre-stretched on like it. This. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a very good quality paper. It's uh, what they call 300 pound cold pressed arches watercolor paper. It's a half sheet. The full sheet comes twice mm -hmm. as big, 22 by 30. This is roughly 14 and a half by 22. Is this what you usually do your and sketches I use, on? I use a lot of this paper and I buy it by the choir. That is, I buy 25 sheets at a time from a wholesale house. Uh, the paper is immersed under water, under a kitchen sink or spigot, and I let it drip dry for a couple of minutes. Then I lay it flat down on the, on the board and, and uh, tape it down with ordinary uh, package tape. Mm -hmm. Now before you tape it down, you have to dry the edge with uh, some uh, paper towel because this tape won't stick to yes. very wet surface, so I just dry the edge. The rest of it remains mm -hmm. wet, and then uh, it will. Uh, I tape it down, uh, seal it tight, and in about 20 minutes, it dries perfectly tight. It doesn't buckle when I work on it. So when you're going out on location, you have this this equipment in your car. That's right. It's all in my car. This is all done at home. And uh, this is a little bucket here. I, I hang on that little uh, little hook. This and, is for your uh, water. That's for my water. Oh, you even bring your water along. I huh? bring my water, and I just fill it up mm -hmm. like that. Of course, I don't need to paint until I get the drawing. Now, the next step would be to uh, talk about the subject and of our location. And uh, I've picked this spot because I have a, I was here a couple of weeks ago in an afternoon and I saw a wonderful possibility for a painting with the uh, goats in this barnyard. And they are living in this little outbuilding here, which is kind of interesting with the tree overhanging. We don't have the beautiful sunny day, which I like, which I really prefer. But uh, anyway, I have uh, all the, uh, composition pretty much the way I want it. The, uh, the tree, the wall, the ground, the part of the barn. I'm not interested in making a large uh, representation of the scene. I'm only interested in the intimate quality of this particular mm -hmm. subject and within the confines of my paper. And uh, I have some pictures I've done and sketches of the goats which are going to be compose in, in this context, but mm -hmm. I need to get the location first and have it composed comfortably on the paper, and then the goats go in as I see fit. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't talk about my equipment so much yet. This is my paint box, which is a... Uh, now, is this your traveling paint this box? This is my traveling mm -hmm. box. I have all the colors here I need. I use the Winsor Newton Professional Watercolor paints and uh, it all goes into a, a fisherman's <laughs> kit. Uh, it has trays here for my paints, pencils, brushes. I even have a pair of pliers here I used to remove stubborn paint caps. Oh, you know, yes. Very often these tubes get so dried and hard you can't turn them off with, it, with your fingers so I take a pair of pliers mm -hmm. and this will remove the cap. So you're prepared for any emergency. So, so that's what I have that there for. Uh, I have assorted pencils. I have various brushes here from uh, wide ones to small ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
Are these some, natural bristle? Some come to a very sharp point like this one. That's a quill. They call that a quill because it's the ferrule is not built into a metal ferrule. It's kind of a goose quill mm. yes, uh, I can see arrangement. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a large wash brush when you're dealing with skies mm -hmm. or open fields and large areas of, uh, of the paper. I have to have a large brush to cover that uh, area. Well, do you always use a pencil first? I uh, usually uh, start out with a, a pencil drawing. Watercolor demands uh, a very pre-planned, uh, thought out uh, procedure. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know where you're going to put your colors or your washes, and you make a mistake, it's hard to correct it in watercolor because the paint goes into the paper, it doesn't want it to come off very easily. Like in oil, you can scrape it out and start over. In watercolor, you have a limited amount of leeway to change, but not too much. So uh, the composition has to be pretty carefully laid out in pencil, where you want your point of interest, your foreground, your background, mm -hmm. your perspective, all these things will take another demonstration to explain. Yes. Well, after you've sketched, do you then immediately put color? Yes. After I sketch, after I make the uh, main outlines of uh, of a building or, or whatever it is, still life, mm -hmm. then you uh, proceed with the. Uh, it can be any background or foreground. Mm -hmm. I don't have any formula, but just uh, anything which catches my eye. I do will say this though, if you are painting in a situation where the sun is going to move around rapidly, I would get that to that first, that exciting moment which may change, I try to get to that mm -hmm. right away. Mm -hmm. Another thing, if you're painting a boat or a car or a figure which isn't going to be around too long, I would get to that right away mm -hmm. and the rest of the subject will stay mm -hmm. put. You can get to that later. Ranoff, I notice that you stand while you paint. Uh, how long do you usually stay at a site to paint it? Yeah, I always stand up to work. Uh, first of all, a lot of people sit down, but you'll notice if you sit down, you lose a great deal of your visual mm -hmm. uh, image because of the compressed uh, perspective. And I, f I have more freedom standing up. Now, I will uh, maybe start a subject in the morning and uh, uh, I will go as far as I can before the light changes, which mm -hmm. sometimes occurs in two or three hours. Then I will stop work and maybe do something else in the afternoon, but return to the subject the mm -hmm. following morning to proceed in that painting. Now, you also use photographs, don't you? Or I take photographs mostly when I go on trips, uh, traveling, mm -hmm. when you aren't in an area too long and you don't have time to do all the subjects you want to do. But at home and within half an hour of my home, all my work is done on location. I just keep going back and forth until I get the painting done. Yes. But I do have a, quite a library of slides from trips I've taken to Ireland and England and uh, down south and Georgia, up to Maine. We usually go to Maine uh, every summer and I have a big collection of slides of those places. Now you've won quite a lot of awards. Uh, you're a member of the Dolphin. What is that, the Dolphin Club uh, of Watercolors? Well, I'm a member of the American Watercolor Society as well as the Philadelphia Watercolor Club and a number of other art organizations. But uh, they have a, a distinction in the AWS, they call it. If you have one five annual exhibitions, you're eligible to become a Dolphin member. So you, over the years, I did accumulate five awards from AWS, and I got a special citation mm -hmm. uh, entitling me to Dolphin Fellowship. Well, now, you have painted not only Bucks County, but all over this United we States. We like to travel. We, we like to go to abroad every number of years or go down south in the winter. We uh, go around uh, central Pennsylvania and Maine. Almost every summer we go to Maine for mm -hmm. a couple of weeks to paint. A lot of artists love Maine because it's so uh, excited and, and uh, a different, not only a different uh, climate, but it's, 
an entirely different world up there than here. Yes. Have you ever estimated how many paintings you've done? I have a little book upstairs, which is kind of a painter's log, and I started it in 1953. And since 53, I've painted about 3,150 pictures. I'd say you're prolific. I didn't keep records before 1953. Oh, so there's even more. Yeah. <laughs> now, you also are a writer. Um, not many watercolors do writing, too. Well, I'm not a, really a writer, but I, I have published two books on works that have interested me, the railroad stations and Victorian Could architecture. Could we see those? Yes, we'd be very glad to show them to you. Mr. Bai, I've seen some of your books in the local bookstores, but I understand you have a third book on the way. What is it going to be about? Yes, Susan. Uh, I've been working on this uh, project here for three or four years. It's going to deal with Bucks County and parts of Hunterdon County, New Jersey. And it will simply be a illustrated uh, picture book, if you will, of uh, some of the paintings I've done over the years in this area. And here's a listing of them. I have uh, so far uh, photographed, made into transparencies, uh -huh. 100 images of my work. And they all have been uh, written about and to captions, which you are now looking yes, through. Yes, yes. Uh, so it I, really gives a history of the architecture of Bucks County. I've tried to research Hunterton. every place where I painted. And uh, with not any great detail, but just enough to mm -hmm. uh, hold the uh, reader's attention. Oh, I hope that this one's in the bookstore soon. I'm engaged now. I do have some publishers in mind, but right now I'm engaged in trying to get some uh, financial funding for the book, which mm -hmm. is uh, a problem. Little, but little everything else is ready. Good. Well, your first one was on um, railroad stations. How did that come about? This started out many years ago when I was uh, start, starting out painting on, on location. I happened to think that a railway station was a, a quaint thing to paint, simply something to paint besides a farm or a village street scene or a landscape. And I began to notice that railroad stations were rather charming. And I began to paint a number of them. This was oh. way back in the 40s and 50s. I had about a dozen of them painted, and I had them in my shows, and mm, one of lovely. my colleagues came up to me one day and says, Ronald, why did you do a whole bunch of railroad stations? We do a series of them. So I did, and, and uh, this is around 1955 or 6. I had a show in the Reading Terminal uh, of, the, of the Reading uh, Railroad yes. down in Philadelphia mm -hmm. of some of the paintings I did for, of the Reading stations. So how many r railroad stations are in this book? Well, uh, at that time, the Reading Company took four of mine and made them into reproductions. And the, it was a great success. Mm -hmm. They sold them for only $3 oh. for a set of four. Imagine that. Yes. Four pictures for only $3. Mm -hmm. But then uh, that grew into uh, a rather major project, and I went on to do about 150 railroad stations oh, over the years, lovely. of which about 105 are printed in this book. Oh, here's one I recognize. Yeah, here's one in Lambertville. Now, this one is uh, this Lambertville Station the way it used to be before it became uh, a vacant building, mm -hmm. before the, the, uh, the Lambertville station, station became mm -hmm. a restaurant for about 12 years. It was a kind of a derelict building. It was just sitting there, mm -hmm. very forlorn. And this is the way it was during those years when it wasn't active as a, it was uh, just going to pieces. Anyway, it became beautifully restored by this uh, troika of uh, entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And they uh, spent about a million and a half or two to fix it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's now a, a very desirable place to, to uh, well, dine. This is all architecture then, this book? Now this uh, book is just railroad stations, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, this progressed into another book on uh, Victorian architecture. And uh, a friend of mine who I got to know, who was an architectural historian, a fellow named uh, Henry Magaziner, he said, why don't you, now that you have this book, I want you to, why don't you do one on Victorian architecture? 
and uh, I hadn't given it much thought up until that point, but I did. I, I also thought that Victorian oh, buildings so were very paintable, very picturesque. Yes. So I went around the countryside doing Victorian buildings, mostly around Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, parts of Maryland, and points south and west. Mm -hmm. But I didn't try to make it a nationwide uh, study at all. It's too big a project. Now, who is Margaret By Ritchie? And Margaret By Ritchie is my sister, and she's an architectural historian uh, with a degree, uh, doctor of philosophy degree in American uh, uh, art subjects. Mm -hmm. And she wrote the text for this book. Oh, this is a beautiful. Do you happen to have any of the originals here to show us? I have a few here, Susan. Here's one. Uh, this is a, uh, a watercolor of a uh, city house on 40th and Walnut Street, Philadelphia, in West Philadelphia. And uh, as you can see, it has a lot of turrets and uh, steeples and a, a lot of ornate window work. This was the style of the Queen Anne period of architecture, which was active around uh, uh, the latter part of the 19th century, 1885 mm -hmm. on up to 1900. Now, where is this building? And this is 40th Street and f and uh, Walnut Street. The building has now has been raised, oh, and right. what you find here now is a f fast food restaurant. Oh, that's a shame. But I had fun doing this, and it was all done on location. I went down to Philadelphia about four days to paint this picture right on the mm -hmm. corner across the street. The colors are lovely. Here, I'll put this over here. But another one here, uh, illustrated in this book, mm -hmm. of the firehouse in Mount Holly, New oh. Jersey. Can you see the book? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, I can see the book. Uh, I call this a wash drawing. It's not a full color painting like the mm -hmm. other one. This is done mostly in sepia and a little bit of color in the cupola. But it's a uh, delightful little uh, firehouse, oh, and it's lovely. still standing in Mount Holly. You can see the date the, of the company. is from mm -hmm. 1752 mm -hmm. to 1892. 1892. Oh, that's beautiful. I found another one here in my file. This is a, uh, believe it well, or let's not. Let's see what you say. Uh, uh, garden house. It's a very elegant outhouse oh. on an estate in <laughs> Uh, Georgetown, Colorado. I happened to be out in Colorado and gave a watercolor workshop, uh, I think around 1966, and uh, I did beautiful. a little bit of painting this, out there. These are rocks or a this huge is cliff? A, this is a hillside. This is a, a mountainside coming down into a steep gulch. And this was uh, oh. on the Gemmel, see uh, the uh, Hamel property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, which rather had the adjoined to rather elegant house in the on the street side. Well, that certainly is an elegant outhouse, isn't, isn't it? it? Though, Mr. By, we appreciate your taking all this time with us today, and uh, it's really been a privilege to be with one of Bucks County's best watercolorists. Thank you so much. Well, I've enjoyed being with you and uh, showing you my work and explaining some of my projects. Good luck with your latest one. Thank you. And that's all for Art Beat tonight. Please join us again next month. This is Susan Steele Mulholland. Good night. <laughs>